Hi, my name is Mark Senek. I'm a senior vice president and partner at Fleshman Hillard in Washington, D.C. I also write the weblog IONFDA. Recently, I had the opportunity to sit down with Dr. David Kessler, who is a member of our International Advisory Board. We were able to talk a great deal for a length of time about changes in the regulatory environment since the time that he was FDA uh, commissioner. He served as commissioner from 1990 to 1997, and he was appointed by two, two different presidents, which is no small feat in this town. Um, I wanted to ask him, first of all, about all of the changes that have occurred at FDA. While he was FDA commissioner, there was a tremendous amount of change. And when he left, the Baltimore Sun said of his tenure, uh, when David Kessler came to the FDA, it was a paper tiger. When he left, it was no more. Um, certainly, things have changed since 1997, and we've seen the advent of a lot of new challenges for FDA. Uh, it seems like the agency has grown and grown and grown, and more and more is being demanded of it, uh, of the agency. So I wanted to ask him, what did he think about all of the changes, and how can the FDA actually do all the things that is being asked of it to do? And here's what he had to say. I think you've hit on probably the most important question. How does FDA uh, do it all? And the task, no doubt, has gotten bigger. Its jurisdiction has gotten uh, bigger just with the creation of the tobacco center that we pushed and, and worked hard, uh, you know, very hard uh, for. And I think the, it's still very much on people's minds, certainly in this town, uh, whether FDA is up to the job. Uh, that question still, I think, uh, gets asked and the jury is out. Um, I think that, I think FDA has, over the last number of years, um, come to understand that that's the critical question. It cannot be at, on every corner. It cannot be in every plant. Right? And all FDA really can do is to create incentives for companies to deal with problems before they become big problems, before they get out of hand, before people die, before they affect the public health. What you see happening in recognition of um, that conundrum, uh, the, the, the universe that it regulates is vast, FDA's resources are always going to be limited, that what FDA is saying um, is something that I think the agency has not said very clearly or loudly before, but it is saying it, um, I think, um, in a very forceful way if you listen carefully. And what the FDA is saying is we, the agency, have taken up enforcement. It has talked about criminal violations. Mm -hmm. We forget that the Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act is a law enforcement, scientific law enforcement statute. Um, that adulteration is a strict liability crime. Um, and as much as we tend not to think about FDA in that kind of way, we tend to think of it as a scientific agency. What the agency has said, and I th think certainly compliance, and especially compliance in, in drugs, and I applaud them, is the statement that you, the purveyor, you, the manufacturer, you, the company, have the obligation to find problems and deal with them before there is harm. Don't wait for us to find the problems. Don't come to us and ask us to fix the problems for you. You, senior corporate management, have a responsibility to have the systems in place and um, to make sure that those problems stay under control, certainly when it comes um, to the drugs that uh, FDA, the drugs and biologics and, uh, and devices the agency regulates. And if you don't, we're going to hold you accountable. 